This is Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. This podcast is made in collaboration with The Jewish Journal. Check them out at jewishjournal.com. Also in collaboration with Arutz Sheva, israelnationalnews.com. And last but not least, in collaboration with Australian Jewish News, check them out at ajn.timesofisrael.com. If you'd like to support the podcast, visit 2njb.com slash donate. July 1st was a date some Israelis were looking forward to. For the past few months, most Israelis have been speaking about one thing. Well, except for Corona. Annexation a.k.a. instilling Israeli law in much of the West Bank, or Judea and Samaria. Since the Six-Day War in 1967, when Israel conquered the area, Israeli citizens have been living there in settlements, under military rule. Annexation would change that permanently, and settlers would cease to be settlers. They would be living de facto in the state of Israel. Of course, in Israel, nothing's ever that simple. This plan split the country in two, those who prayed for annexation and those who dreaded it. Uri Zaki is a political activist, a member of the Meretz Party, one of Israel's more left-wing parties. He is the founder of Democracy Strikes Back, an organization that strives to be, quote, the assaultive tool in the struggle for the Israeli democracy, Uri is also the partner of M.K. Tamal Zandberg, who we had the pleasure of hosting on the podcast. Check out episode 34. We are super happy, super thrilled to be joined by Uri Zaki to discuss the deal of the century, democracy in Israel, and much, much more. Thank Hello. you so much for joining Just us. Just a bit Hi, closer to the mic. Oh, sorry. It's, it's uh, the uh, social distancing yeah. that I'm following. Um, so it took us three years since we had your partner, uh, right. Tamal Zandberg, to get you. Uh, well, you, you didn't try three years ago. And, and now <laughs> with uh, all these uh, limitations, when somebody tells me, come to Yad Eliyahu where we're uh, taping this, I uh, <laughs> immediately said yes. Uh, Any chance to get out of the house? few corrections, though. Yeah, First, yes. the organization, my organization is called the Front for P- the Protection of Democracy. Okay. okay. I took yes. it from the website. Maybe I took really? the wrong phrase. It's an from... event. It's an event called uh, ah, Democracy Strikes Back, but the uh, okay. actual... Uh, organization, check it out. Okay. Um, at, at www. Hachazit, which is spelled h a c h a z i t. dot org. dot i l. Um, I'll put links in the description as yeah. well. Yeah. And the second correction, which is um, uh, with more substance, but you know, we this is the reason we are here to to discuss is it's you you kind of ignored the fact that who the the people who live under military uh, rule for the past uh, 53 years in the uh, West Bank slash Judea and Samaria are uh, almost 3 million Palestinians today. They right. are the ones who are actually living under... But they won't be control. annexed. This is a, a very good question whether uh, you can have such enclaves like the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Israeli uh, and to a certain degree the American plan. Uh, assume, but uh, you know the territory is a is a whole, and uh, you cannot really, uh, you know, Netanyahu spoke of of subjects, the Palestinians who live uh, in the areas that would be annexed. Uh, we we drove we drove uh, we, no, we, we dove, dove right, we dove in right into the uh, to the issue. It's to, good. To the issue. Um, Continue. Yeah. So uh, Netanyahu used the, the the term subjects, which is a colonial term, you know, to say that. Even he, he uh, and again, I will, I will, you know, in, in, a, in a sec, I will zoom out and, and to say why I think annexation is an anti-Zionist uh, plan, any annexation, uh, unilateral one, at least. But if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting that aside and, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Netanyahu and, and he said the Palestinians that would be, you know, you can't refrain from having any Palestinian uh, in any annexation in the uh, um, the West Bank slash Judea and Samaria. I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing those two terms because, you know, as a uh, an Israeli Jew, uh, you know, I feel that Judea and Samaria is a, is a you know, uh, a good description to the area, the biblical area, and there is a reason why the right wing... Uh, Wants can, it. No, but uses this term. This is since uh, Begin. And the West Bank is also a, a legit term because it, it 
you know, it defines it's it's sometimes sometimes it's funny. Like you you you, you would listen to to Israeli uh, news, and when they refer to settlers, they said uh, this and that happened in Judea Samaria today, and then when they refer to the Palestinians, I don't know uh, something happened in Nablus. Uh, they they refer to the West Bank as if these are yeah. two different. And if, if you're listening from the outside, you're like, what's the problem? These guys get yeah, the West Bank. Man, these guys these get guys, Judea, Judea and Samaria. <laughs> exactly. And we're talking about the same. Area okay, right. an, an area which is uh, about 22 percent of of uh, British mandatorial um, Palestine, 78 uh, percent is proper Israel. About 22 percent is what was referred to as the West Bank, the West Bank of the Jordan River. Of course, the mm -hmm. Eastern Bank is uh, the Kingdom of Jordan. We usually have to ask our guests to do this, and I love the fact that you did it on you know that you gave that you kind know of the trail. context. <laughs> For our listeners, yeah, I knew, you know, I've, I spent some time in uh, in the states uh, dealing with those issues, yeah. and you know, I know. Uh, by, and and, bef and besides, you know, this is this is important, uh, you yeah, know, because yeah. we use as Israelis. By the way, many Israelis to our uh, listeners from uh, overseas, many Israelis would know would not know why the West Bank is called the West Bank, for instance. It, it, you know, don't assume that if you don't know that, it means that you're. Right. You know, and the reason is it's the Jordan River. It refers to the yeah, Jordan exactly. River. Jordan River and the eastern bank of the Jordan River is what Jordan. The, the kingdom of Jordan, the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. Which is uh, also part of the dream, the historic dream of the, some parts of the Zionist movement. It's, it, right. The, it was the, part of uh, British mandatory Palestine. Yeah. Not, not, not really. I mean, only for, for a few right. months. But yeah. uh, it became uh, very soon... Uh, it, it, it became part of the, it became a kingdom, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not, not a truly independent one, but it, it became a kingdom. It, it is true that it's part, first of all, of course, of some parts of it are parts uh, that the, where Israelites were, uh, would settle, although it's not part of the uh, promised land. Mm -hmm. If you uh, read the, well, at least not the uh, proper, uh, the promised land is also. Till uh, the Euphrates. Yeah, it, it depends how you look at it. But uh, for instance, the Shemitah uh, laws do not apply there. Uh, while they do apply in uh, anywhere west of the, of the Jordan, um, so so what? Why is annexation uh, anti-Zionist? Right, we uh, I, I dove too much into it. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's good though. So um, I, I I I got to, into this because I, I referred to the to, to, to the word subjects that Netanyahu used ah, yes, for yes, the Palestinians, yes, yes. and and we know subjects are uh, people with. Uh, some kind of status, but not an equal status. So we're talking about and on, on even the small un, annexed areas, you, you would have, according to Netanyahu himself, you would have um, two uh, separate populations with two separate uh, sets of rights and legislation. That, that's, you know, uh, the, the, in modern times, that is uh, called apartheid. I know we hate to use, I, I used to call it the A word when I, when I was in the United States because I really didn't want to connect Israel to, to that uh, regime. But if this would be done, and that leads me to your question, we are, you know, Zionism is based on two pillars. On two pillars. Since the dawn of, of, of Zionism, since uh, Theodor Herzl came up with the, uh, uh, the notion of a Jewish state, Judenstadt, in his uh, famous uh, uh, booklet or, or letter uh, to the Rothschilds, um, two basic elements were there already. One pillar is uh, Jewish uh, uh, nation, sovereignty. statehood, sovereignty, yeah. and the other one is democracy. If you look at the uh, Zionist Congress, it was the second political body to have uh, equal rights to women, for instance, uh, voting rights for women. The first one was New Zealand, by the way. Um, if you read uh, Jabotinsky, the founder of of the today Likud party, of, of the, the stream in Zionism, the right-wing uh, stream, very much the democracy is there from the beginning. Of course, also uh, 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 Beryl Katzenelson and, and Ben-Gurion and Begin and, and everybody, if, if you read any Zionist leader or scholar, the, those two pillars were always there. Now, the problem, the fact that we, did not, we never... Uh, uh, annexed so far, and you had different uh, governments in power in Israel. You had uh, uh, labor, and I'm talking pre '67 uh, uh, labor. You know, a party that was more, much more hawkish than than today. What is left of labor, and I'm talking about Begin, who was you know 
He talked about the two banks of the Jordan River. He, he, came, he was the leader of the movement who said that those two banks are, are ours. And he was the one who annexed the Golan Heights. He never annexed uh, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria. Um, and the reason for that is the population over there. And if you annex it, then you, you, you come to a, 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 to a junction where you have to choose between those two pillars that I talked about. The first one being the uh, national homeland of the Jewish people. And the other one is democracy. And why do you have to choose? Because if you annex, seriously, the, the whole uh, settler population or most of it, that means you, you uh, and if, if we saw the maps we're talking about, you, you basically annex everything in that area. You live bubbles. You live, exactly, in enclaves. Okay? Enclaves. You, you live of in Palestinian the, population. Of population. And, and, and again, right now we're talking about half a million Jewish uh, Israeli settlers in the West Bank, uh, jo uh, Judea and Samaria, and roughly three million Palestinians, l less than three million, but somewhere between two and a half and three million Palestinians. So there's a, a majority of Palestinians there. Um, of course, it, you can always say, uh, uh, you know, the, the easy solution is, you know, you don't annex the Palestinians. That's what you said. But... It doesn't work. I mean, you can't have such a huge population. You know, some of the right-wing uh, uh, leaders, such as Bennett and others, talk about let's annex Area C. Now, Area C is, again, I'll explain to our uh, uh, listeners. Um, in Oslo, in uh, the, the Oslo process, in, in, which started in 93, and later on in 95, the West Bank was divided into uh, three sections, Uh, this was an interim agreement that was supposed to end in May 1999 in a permanent status agreement that would resolve all outstanding questions. Now, it never ended. Uh, Rabin was uh, assassinated, then Netanyahu took uh, power for the first time, and then in, in, in May 1999, uh, Netanyahu was in power. He did, want, he did not want to go on that track of a Palestinian state. And when Barak was, uh, replaced him, started a peace process which ended up uh, with a failure and a second intifada that um, pushed everything much, much, much further away from any solution. So we are still depending on an, an interim agreement that was signed in 1995. And in 1995, the area was um, uh, divided. divided into uh, three sections, A, B, and C. Uh, area A, where the Palestinian Authority uh, has full control, It's a very small territory. It's only the territory, the boundaries of the large Palestinian uh, urban uh, centers. Uh, It's not full, full, full control, though, right? Even Area A is, in you're, fact, under you're Israeli military. You're absolutely right. It's under full administrative right. control. Autonomy, the, but... Exactly. Autonomy, autonomy it's even minus. Yeah. yeah. Bravo, you're completely right. It's, uh, and I wanted to, to I can go to, to merits that. now. I, I call... <laughs> I no, can lead merits. That's, before we go <laughs> to what's good or bad, these are facts. Yeah. The, the sovereign, de facto sovereign of the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, is the uh, commander, the, the uh, uh, territorial commander. In Israel's case, it's the uh, uh, commander of the uh, Central Command. Uh, the uh, general, uh, I, I don't even remember who's the general right now. I, I remember he's in isolation right now because of coronavirus. Yeah. Because um, we conquered it in 67 in a war. Because we are occupying it, according to uh, Israel very um, early in the game, said we're occupying it according to the, uh, to the uh, Geneva Convention, and it's an occupied territory. So uh, in, it's true that in 93, the, the Palestinian Authority was... Uh, uh, was launched, and it's true that there is an autonomy there. By the way, uh, and that's what I wanted to get to, they control the only, the, as you said, administri uh, ad administrative control, the cities where most of the people live, both in Israel er, and in, uh, and in uh, uh, the West Bank. And, and we're talking about, I believe, something like 15% or something like that. Don't catch me in the numbers because I didn't do my homework before coming here. It's all for my mind. Uh, but it's, it's something like that. Then they have only civil control, but not the uh, security control over areas B, which are the suburbia of those urban uh, A and centers. B together are like 60%, 70%? No, they're like less? 30%. 30%. 30%. Okay. They are 30% of the, of the territory. That's, okay. And, and mind you, I'm talking, we're talking about 30% of 22% 
of yeah, of mandatorial uh, is, uh, Palestine, Palestine or yeah. Israel, right? And for them, historically, they regard as as much as we do. They regard the the whole country as as uh, as their promised, uh, uh, I don't know, nation or land. Yeah, um, not so much their promised land as their homeland. As their homeland, exactly. Um, I, I had in mind the the uh, the Latin because I'm I'm a, I'm a an amateur historian of La of Roman history and, and patria is the um, ah, right is the uh, fatherland Roman. yeah exactly um so we're we're talking about a uh, 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 a very small area that is controlled by the the uh, Palestinians i should say in parenthesis that uh ever since the year 2001 uh after the second intifada the the uh, difference between areas a and b is doesn't really exist because although according to the Oslo Accords, Israel was, is not allowed to operate, uh, its security forces are not allowed to penetrate Area A. They do it on a, they, on a weekly basis, I would say, these days. And although it's a breach of the agreement, the agreement still uh, stays on. I, also, I would also say that Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, the president, so-called president of the Palestinian Authority, uh, said in many occasions that he regards, till recently, till the annexation plan, he regards the, uh, mil the uh, security uh, cooperation between the Palestinian Authority and Israel as a sacred cooperation. Like uh, many of the, the fact that we have peace and quiet in the next, last uh, 10 years, Netanyahu attributes it to himself. It's a lot because of this co uh, cooperation between right. uh, the Palestinian forces and the If Israeli you want to see how forces. it looks like, just watch Fauda. Exactly. Yeah. Before, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. And you see the co cooperation there. So... Um, so what, those, why those let's, let's enclaves, focus? Let's so focus we're, we're talking on... about enclaves that uh, are are about thirty percent of the territory. It's true that in the uh, Trump plan, they're talking about seventy percent of the territory going to the Palestinians, but uh, leaving the uh, Jordan Valley and Jerusalem uh, all uh, under Israeli uh, sovereignty, and that's the um, that's a dictate. But before we get to that, okay. Because right now, Netanyahu doesn't talk about accepting the, the Trump plan. And, and I can explain why the Trump plan is a, is a non-starter in, in, uh, um, in my mind. Uh, but it's different than what Netanyahu is trying to do. And it, it also it, it's integral to the uh, pl Trump plan in the fact that the Trump plan, the deal of the century, also talks about an annexation now while a Palestinian state might, if they'll accept all terms. Uh, um, That's the beauty. It's a beauty for whom? Because as I said before, this <laughs> is anti-Zionist. It's the art of the deal. <laughs> I don't know what kind of deal this. This is a suicidal uh, deal for Israel. Yeah. Because when, when you do what, what uh, this annexation, and I'm going back to the, the territories I'm talking about, we're talking about enclaves okay, of, of Palestinian uh, 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 autonomous rule in a mass Israeli sovereignty, part of Israel. But you annex all these people, but you don't, uh, uh, no, you changing. annex most of the population. You annex like ninety percent. It's of Jewish. The, the, when you yes, if you annex according the to the what they're, talk, they're talking about, for instance, the Jordan Valley, you you annex a, a massive amount of land, and you leave those enclaves of Palestinian territories. Okay, even if it's thirty percent. Okay, yeah, thirty percent. But this is the whole unpopulated uh, area. It's not unpopulated, by the way. There are about 150,000 Palestinians living in the Jordan Valley, much more than Israeli uh, Jewish settlers. Um, and you don't, you're not planning to give them any, any uh, uh, civil rights. You're not, you're not going to, even those people, you're not going uh, not to... Not to give them citizenship. I just want to, because we're about to, I think, get into a little bit of uh, talking about the issues and the different sides. I think you did a, an excellent job of laying down the facts. There's, but as you mentioned, these were facts. So I do want for our listeners because there were a few things that I think that maybe are debated on on the uh, on both sides. One is the population that you mentioned, which is, uh, a, you know, north of three million uh, Palestinians living in the West Bank. No, so, I said somewhere between two and a half and three. Two and a half and three. So many people see it more closer to two, maybe even below two. There's there's questions about the credibility uh, the censuses that are run and the mm. estimations of the population yeah. because the palestinians of course they have a uh, an They're, interest to yeah. mm -hmm. but that's that's one which is probably more controversial uh and the other issue is that 
the idea that it's an apartheid state when you call a certain population of its subjects, I think is also not necessary. I mean, apartheid is when you have citizens that are receiving two different levels of rights, right? I don't think anybody's suggesting that these Palestinians will become citizens at a lower, and I, you might call this semantics, but no, I think I... that in any democracy, you have you have people who aren't citizens of the state and they don't have full rights. Yeah, but these are not immigrants. These are people who, who are living there under, by the way, under Israeli control. There's yeah. a de facto situation like that for the past 53 years. But we're talking about a, a de jure uh, change, which is... Uh, very significant because you know if you rely on on the the laws of war, of war and the Geneva uh, conventions of occupation and so on and so forth that's something that inherent to that situation is temporary uh it's temporary nature if you do that if you annex those territories without granting the citizenship to all its um, population even though to, to those areas then you create an apartheid situation because what are these people so many would say you and we've had you know guests on the podcast we've talked about giving people a road to citizenship oh, meaning well, well hold on hold on i want because i want to get what to, basis? i want to get why, to your why, what's the base what's the, the difference basis between is, them? is swearing allegiance to the state but why why are they different because when you have an enemy population... What do you mean enemy population? I mean that the Israelis and Palestinians... So if they're enemy, are, why are you going to annex them? But, uh, so that, that brings us to the question. What is... If, if, okay, cause I if think we that, leave them out if we leave, enclaves, then we don't annex them. But again, you're creating... By the way, uh, the, the apartheid uh, regime had uh, two different uh, uh, ways to... Uh, uh, they they came up with this genius uh, ingenious idea. Also, it it was called Bantustan. They they had certain enclaves of blacks, and they said, okay, let's solve the the uh, idea. We'll have uh, small nations, uh, which together would be the the Bantustans, and and they they will solve the idea because, as you say, you know, these are not citizens. They have their own autonomy. They are the Bantustans. This is also part of apartheid, by the way. Apartheid, and 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 look it up on the. Um, uh, definition, everybody's welcome to uh, open up the uh, uh, Treaty Against Apartheid and, 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 and the definition of that uh, crime. And we're talking about when you, when you have uh, an area uh, under your control which has two different, which uh, not only has two different uh, sets of r rules, but, but uh, uh, according to your ethnicity or your uh, national background, you treat other groups differently then this is this uh, comes up to uh, to being an apartheid again this is not jewish it's anti-zionist and why the hell do we need that that's you know wh the, why do we need that but the apartheid was pr primarily based on ethnicity or race as you know and what's the difference here this is different this is nationality this is the fact that i mean there are plenty of arabs living in israel that have full citizenship right. full rights and that's different and and reach you know the highest levels of government the, the highest level you're not of, granting this to to them and no, so that's what I'm saying. But I'm it, saying the idea that it's similar to apartheid kind of breaks down it's when, identical. You, when you. It's because it's not based on race. I I don't say that the it is based on race. It's based on the race that the fact that these are Arabs and we are Jews, and uh, it's true that Arabs here will have you, you have now There's, what a, a million and a half, two million. By the Arabs way, if you're Israel? so sure that there are only uh, two million uh, Palestinians there, why not next? Why not the next in the whole? area and granting them all uh, citizenship. I, I don't care for what you wish for. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm just saying I'm not sure I'm way, against that. The, the many Palestinians say, see that because they are sure that there are more Palestinians uh, than what you think. So that's the reason why it's a junction because if there it were... It would be a demographic win, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And Israel would cease to be a Jewish homeland because at one point, if, if you'll have one person, one vote, and that's the irony of Israeli politics, because many right-wingers say, yeah, let's do that. And the left-wingers say, no, if we annex the entire po Palestinian population in the territories, we'll cease to exist because they'll, they'll kick us to the sea, no, which is a, a it, bit of a right-wing I don't, I don't perception. Think, by the way, I don't think the, the, they'll necessarily kick us to the sea. I, I, I wouldn't take that chance. Uh, I believe that uh, the Jewish people should not be the first, second or third people to give up on the uh, national identity of their uh, uh, country because we are, you know, the 20th century told us something that we do need a majority and control. First and foremost, we need a country of our own. So to give that up 
it's, 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 we should not be the uh, guinea pigs for that. Uh, you know, uh, I see now Spain is torn. And, and, and I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think that we should be the, the, the first ones to, to try that. Um, even regardless of whether we're going to be kicked to the sea or just give, give up on the, the nature of this country. By the way, it's not the left. There are some people on the left, on the far left, would say, yes, that's, you know, that's uh, the universal uh, notion. It's true that the far, far left and the far, far right, uh, I, I wouldn't say the far right, the far, far left, and some uh, elements in the right that still have the dignity and, and, and uh, the obligation to follow democracy say that, what you say. Because mm-hmm. most people on the right whether the extreme right or today even the mainstream right, are very easy on giving up, uh, giving democratic rights, civil rights to the Palestinians. Right. Because you have, I mean, the Begin heritage, Menachem Begin, you know, when he spoke, when, when he was asked, why don't you annex on the one hand or why, why do you go to this autonomy? You know, he started the notion of autonomy with, in Camp David with uh, Egypt. He said, and he was careful because uh, back then Israel had uh, diplomatic ties with uh, uh, South Africa and had uh, uh, close collaboration. He said, I don't want to, uh, we cannot uh, have the Palestinians living in a Rhodesia. He used Rhodesia instead of South mm-hmm. Africa because he didn't want, didn't want to assol- uh, insult the uh, um, modern day uh, Zimbabwe, South- right? But Rhodesia was a place where the uh, uh, white farmers yeah. had um, more rights than the uh, black population. So Menachem Begin, the mythological, I would say, the, 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 the greatest leader of the Likud party, Netanyahu's party, wouldn't even imagine a situation where you control or you have sovereignty over a, over a uh, territory without giving full rights. And you hear that with uh, folks like uh, our pr- current president, uh, um, Ruvi Rivlin, who still follows this uh, notion. Uh, so these are the people who would say, let's grant everybody... But uh, what's the difference? Is there something we missed with your... Can we? No, no, no okay. we can get to it after. Uh, what's the difference between the current status quo and the scenario in which we annex only Jewish population and leave the Palestinians out? What's the difference the, for the Palestinians? It's the all, same thing, the current, right? The current status quo is horrible. It's not sustainable. It's a, uh, 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 an existential threat to the state of Israel and uh, um, an uh, ever-growing uh, erosion on the Zionist vision. First okay, of all. but so what's the first difference all, between those two scenarios? The, 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 the difference is you accelerate this erosion. Because if you, go to, if you go to annexation, that means that what you still claim, you have a facade, okay, right now that it's temporary, right, for 53 years, you end that 53 facade. 53 years is not that temporary. You're right, but at least it's a facade. You, you give some hope that it's going to end. Um, and, and, you know, there were attempts to end it. There were, there were uh, 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 actual uh, uh, attempts to end it. I believe it could have uh, ended. We, we had uh, some luck uh, problems uh, with those attempts. Um, but if you annex, so for the Palestinians, this is a sign that the, the, the route of, of going with Israel to a diplomatic solution the, the, the direction that at least for sure Abu Mazen has been uh, leading in the past, um, when, when did he come to power? 15 years. Uh, something like that. Uh, has ended, has failed. Why? Because he, uh, if, look, okay, so let's what go. What do now. I have to lose? You, we're talking about the Palestinians. Uh, what do you have? What do you or the Palestinians? Me. Us. You will, you will, you will, st- you will see. Uh, uh, a, dire- a totally different direction of, of Palestinian struggle. Might be violent, might not, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it will be a struggle to get one person, one vote, to say, okay, we are now subjects on this. Uh, they will never accept a, a Palestinian state of, of 70%. Why? Because it's 70% of uh, the 22%. That that never say never. That's Maybe their in hundred years, they perhaps will. go with them to a to a to a negotiation and try to uh, to achieve that. I mean, they were offered more than in the past, and it's not an offer uh, which is uh, a kind and respectful offer. It's it's the minimum because again, according to their national narrative, and you know which is backed 
uh, by you know facts, as we said before, by history. They have a claim to the whole uh, country, which they call Palestine. They do not see only the West Bank as Palestine. They see where we sit right now as also part of Palestine, as much as we, at least uh, whoever regards the Jewish heritage and, and the biblical heritage, they, uh, regards the, 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 the Judea and Samaria as part of our promised land. The compromise cannot, but it, it is true that because the fact that Israel occupied and is occupying this territory and remained, uh, it, it, was, it remained as an occupied territory, meaning that it has a temporary uh, status, if you annex parts of it, that's for them they say, okay, we, we were willing, our leadership uh, is willing and states that under any, uh, in any interview and, 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 and speech, and you, you hear Abu Mazen, you hear others, we're talking about a solution based on the 67 lines, meaning the West Bank. If Israel now annexes 30% of those lines, that's it. So we'll go to a struggle. At the end of it, the, at the end of the struggle, and don't think we'll ever be as powerful as we are. And by the way, our government's alliance with one stream in, in American politics, uh, uh, which is extremely um, controversial, the person is controversial, uh, President Trump, uh, very much in a far from the Jewish community, which at the end of the day is the backbone of our special relations with the, the uh, United States. With all due respect, and I have a lot of respect to evangelical Christians, they, they support the state of Israel based on, on faith, uh, faith or whatever. Faith, I'm sorry. Uh, but the fact that we have the support of, 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 of America and, and the, the, the nature of the alliance is the, the Jewish com community there. And, and there's also the issue, I mean, of security. We provide certain benefits for the United States in the area, in for, uh, intel. Uh, I would not count on that. Yeah, Honestly, I would not count on that. Wait, you, think, you think that they care about Israel because of the, Who's the six million Jews in the United States? Yes. Because of the constituency? I think it, it's... Which it, it no, makes it's, up what? Uh, 90% of the donations for every campaign to the presidency. Maybe 70%. I think it's it's combination. I would not say it's only <laughs> money. money. I would not say it's only money. It's definitely part There's of it. I mean, the Jewish, of, uh, the Jewish community, rich conservative donors. I don't the think Jewish that. community, and they're already giving to the Democratic. The uh, Jewish party, community is the Jewish much more influential than its size in the United States. Uh, I believe that uh, the alliance between America and Israel, um, the the uh, narrative of it was built based on on uh, the Jewish presence in in centers of power in centers of thinking in the United States. And it's genuine. It's based on also on the heritage of many American Jews, uh, what uh, their families experienced in, and in Europe. And mutual values. And, and yes, there are also the mutual uh, values, but as, you know... You don't think uh, that's central to it? The fact that Israeli and American values, or com there's common American and Israeli values of democracy and freedom, and that Israel is like a strong foot in the, uh, or stronghold in the, in the Middle East? In I one, believe most. it's part of it. Yeah. I would not count on Israel to remain like that. America, uh, the United States, has been very cynical uh, throughout the years uh, with whom it regards as its allies. Uh, if you take that aside, the, the uh, United States itself, for instance, in Iran, when there was a democratic coup in 1951, uh, the uh, CIA um, uh, canceled that uh, democracy and brought uh, the, the Shah over. So I, I'm not sure that it's only based on, on democracy and all that. I believe it's, it's also part of it, and we should not see erosion in Israel's democracy or in the United States. But I, 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 I think that uh, I would say the following. I'm not saying that Israel should only align with the Democratic Party. I, I do not say that. I say that parts of the, uh, um, the asset that we have is be, Israel being a... A con common denominator between the two, or has been a common denominator between the two uh, parties, a bipartisan issue, something that everybody agrees upon. In the past uh, uh, decade, since Netanyahu came to power, it started with his uh, blunt um, uh, interference with American domestic politics uh, and, and the fight between the uh, Republican led uh, House and uh, President Obama over Iran. It continued with his uh, 
total alliance with President Trump, who's extremely unpopular, not only within the Jewish community. gave lots of results. I do not, I, with all due respect to where the location of the, the uh, uh, American and the embassy is. And the Golan Heights. Or that, which I'm, I'm not sure it's an, uh, uh, any advantage to Israel, for, for real. It's only symbolic. I don't right. see the difference that happened since. Or the difference that happened since the, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I would be happy to have the U.S. embassy and all embassies in Jerusalem. It can happen, happen very quickly if you'll have a, 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 a peace treaty with the Palestinians. The fact that only uh, Mr. Uh, Friedman now is the ambassador in Jerusalem and any other embassy uh, moved there is not uh, by mistake. It happened because there's no consensus about that at all. So I don't think that really helped us. The, the uh, agreement or, or the, the, um, the aid, the military aid that President Obama signed to uh, uh, how many mil- uh, billions 30 of dollars? Mil- 30 billion. 30 billion dollar uh, 30 plus uh, billion. agreement that, that uh, Obama provided Israel is much more helpful to Israel than this symbolic move of, of the embassy with all due respect. And it was a, a bipartisan um, issue. I mean, he was supported by, by, uh, by uh, a But Republican who signed House. it? Bibi signed the deal with Fine. Obama. But After everything you discussed, they signed so, this oh, deal. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, he, was, he, so, he agreed to sign getting $30 billion in military aid to Israel. Wow, that's so uh, no, amazing. You're saying it was so bad with the, the I relationship. Think, I think he yeah. was, I think Obama saw above Bibi and he said, you know, Israel is our ally. And also Obama was affected by his constituencies and, and the, the fact that he has uh, himself uh, was, uh, uh, um, you know, he tex- talks about it, how uh, some Jewish li- leadership in Chicago uh, helped to educate and 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 and, and uh, uh, shape his uh, uh, perception on 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 life. And, and then and he kicked us in the shin at the end with that. Uh, I don't think that he, resolution. I, that resolution is pro-Israel to the way I see it. Yeah, no, I because I think back. settlers settlements are anti-Zionist. Yeah. I, I don't think settlers are settlements. The settlement enterprise is a suicidal um, he kicked enterprise. Settlers in the shin. He he kicked uh, the Israeli extreme right wing notion that is now um uh, being i'm not extreme right wing i feel my shin hurt <laughs> <laughs> no I'm i don't kidding. think i don't band-aid. think he he, he uh, i think what he did is is basically saying to israel look the i would not protect you over settlements because the settlements and by the way yeah. uh before him there were much more he was very very gentle think of what bush senior and even bush uh, junior did uh, over settlements uh, in 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 the in history. Let's go back to the annexation. Let's go so, back to the annexation. So, so like, okay, I, yes. I, I we've talked a lot about why the current uh, situation, why the current plan, the the deal of the century, quote unquote, would be uh, a bad idea in your eyes, would be anti-Zionist. Why any annexation would be, uh, and why the status quo unless it's is agreed also, upon with the Palestinians. Yeah, unless it's agreed. You can upon. have a, a land swap. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we both think that'll be highly unlikely. No? By the way, even the Trump plan has land swaps. And well, yeah, when we're talking about land swaps, Trump, we're talking the, about the, the proper Israel, sovereign tr- Israel territories. The key part of tr- the Trump plan is that there's a little clause in there that basically doesn't wait for Palestinian agreement. There's no there's no line for the Palestinians to sign on. It's right. just an Israeli signature right. that's needed. So, I, I mean, the status quo is not uh, acceptable. The deal is, and I don't mean to like, this is like a counterpoint or anything. I'm just wondering... What is, in your eyes, the plan for uh, what you know, would a, be a, 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 a sustainable peace and uh, a, a, a bright future in the Middle East? Like I know that's a lot, but like you know, some, some a kind future of in the Middle East, some I, kind I, of idea I, I, of where I, I we can, should be. I can tell heading. where exactly where where uh, what would be a good starting point for Israel to finally uh, start a, a, a better, uh, more clear future where it knows what its borders are. And, and, and knowing that for the foreseeable future of, of 100 years or so, at least it would remain as a, a democratic Jewish homeland. And that's an agreement with the Palestinians. You, I, you can't overtake that. You can't, you can't pass that. It's, and such an agreement should have several elements. I was part of, a, of an effort, uh, a non-official one called the Geneva Accord. I don't know whether our listeners are aware of that. We're talking about uh, 18 years ago, or no, 17 years ago, that agreement was uh, signed. It was uh, signed by uh, former officials uh, in Israel, led by Yossi, Dr. Yossi Balin, uh, whom I used to be to work with, 
uh, from the Israeli side and uh, uh, Mr. Yasser Abed Rabo, uh, uh, a high official on the Palestinian side, uh, with uh, former generals, um, uh, academic, academics, uh, and of course politicians from both sides. Uh, well, there are no generals in the Palestinian side, but folks who used to be to take uh, to be part of the armed struggle, I would say, against uh, Israel, and they they came up with a uh, an agreement agreed upon uh, uh, draft agreement, I would call it, and it had several elements. Of course, we will not. I I, I urge all our listeners to look uh, the Geneva Accord up, uh, but the the main elements would be, first of all, for for all of us, security, meaning that the uh, Palestinian state that would uh, uh, be established on the uh, based on the 67 borders, not identical to the 67 borders, because there will be uh, border changes, and most settlers, even according to that plan, would be annexed to Israel. All the areas that are adjacent to the Green Line, um, but in return, Israel would give up uh, territories uh, that are part of sovereign Israel that are not. Uh, that don't have any population. By the way, that specific element is also in the Trump plan, but of course, not one-on-one uh, ratio between uh, the, those territories. What about major uh, population uh, uh, centers like Ariel? So some of them would be according, and in a sec, I will get to my uh, notion, but according to the Geneva plan, those areas would be part of Palestine and therefore be evacuated from... Uh, so Ariel is what, like 100,000 No, people? it's 20,000. 20,000, that's it? Yeah. Maybe 30. I All think right. it's less than 30. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Unless you're with the Palestinian... Yeah, uh, maybe I'm... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are... There are I'm, I mean, and we're talking about... Not that it's that easy to exactly. evacuate. I'm talking about some, something like 180,000 uh, settlers that according to the Geneva Accord uh, line would be uh, in, in... Relocated. Uh, Exactly, in, in, in Palestine. But we're talking about security, okay? The Palestinian state would not have an army. Uh, Israel would have uh, uh, presence, but not necessarily physical presence of, of soldiers along the Jordan River, the eastern uh, front or uh, the, the former eastern front. You would have there an international uh, uh, force that would uh, be uh, obligated to, to you know, maintain that, that uh, border for, again, for the foreseeable future. Uh, Jerusalem would be divided between Israel and, and Palestine. Uh, with uh, there, there is a, a, an internal division. Although I believe that that the, that the uh, um, holy basin, what is called the holy basin, uh, the old city and its uh, surroundings, should be uh, without any sovereignty. These are these are territories that are sacred to uh, the three major monotheistic um, monotheistic um, uh, religions and. Uh, I would I would much rather having them being controlled by those uh, religions as a kind of a Vatican, uh, but that's the the Geneva Accord. That's by the way that notion I just uh, described, uh, where you have a joint, uh, I would say uh, Jewish, Muslim, and and Christian, of course, um, although each denomination has within it many yeah. <laughs> many factions. But let's assume that they'll uh, get. When the, you look their, at Jerusalem, it's just like shit. Just gets so much more complicated. I right? wanted to say you shit, the, and I thought we're, it's not allowed no, to say shit on, on this podcast. I just said we're, shit like five times now. You can't talk. Yeah, you can't talk about the Middle East without saying shit. Okay. <laughs> but like you know, there's the Protestants and the Catholics and the Greek Orthodox and like and you, the reforms and the yes. or, uh, the uh, uh, conservative and the Orthodox and Jews and and the Muslim Shia and so on and so on. So forth. I don't know, but. I, I think that the, the Holy Basin is is very suitable. It's it's uh, I believe one square kilometer. This is like yeah. half a square mile we're talking about. That that causes all the problems and all the great things about Jerusalem, right? Most of Jerusalem is easily divided between Jews and, and Palestinians because uh, most of the neighborhoods are almost not are totally segregated. Okay, so you can divide Israel between uh, Jews and, and Palestinians Jerusalem. quite easily. Yeah. Jerusalem, sorry, so yeah. <laughs> Jerusalem quite easily. Sorry, for but almost anything you could say about Jerusalem, you could say about Israel. I mean, no, it's I don't think so because uh, there are much. It's like a microcosm. Again, in 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 Jerusalem, you have now um, about two hundred thousand uh, Palestinians only in Jerusalem. So uh, a divided. But that's the Geneva plan. That's a Geneva plan, which I think can still be applied. 
One more element, by the way, is the uh, Palestinian refugees, another issue that you need to solve. Uh, the Geneva Plan talks about most of the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, I would say, default um, way for the Palestinian, uh, Palestinian refugee that wants to come back to, to their homeland would be the Palestinian state. Then they'll have other options of absorption around the world. And uh, according to Israeli discretion, uh, what Israel wants to absorb, it would do th th that too. By the way, the Bennett Plan, for instance, the right-wing plan, uh, which was more democratic than, than Netanyahu, said that, it, well, let's annex Area C, but we'll grant 150,000 Palestinian citizenship. The Geneva Accord assumes much less uh, Palestinians absorbed uh, into Israel as uh, uh, But it was made before citizens. the Gaza Revolution, right? Yeah, it's true. Many things happened I think since. It's, I think most of it is still relevant. By the way, my problem with the Geneva Accord, which, as I said before, is, is 17 or 18 years old now, 17 years old now, is not necessarily the, the, the issue of the Palestinians. I believe it can still apply. You, you had, the, the, I mean, you're talking about the division between Gaza and the West Bank. I agree. It, it's there. They just had a, a joint conference, you know, and, and they're starting to cooperate when there is the, the sign of, uh, of, of, of uh, annexation. Uh, you have the Gaza Hamas controlled, backed by Netanyahu. We should say that in order to uh, to divide the West Bank and and, and uh, Gaza, uh, I believe something can be worked out. Or, or I, and if they don't get their shit together, it's, uh, so then I'm talking uh, only on the West Bank. My problem, by the way, is with settlers. Uh, what do you do with settlers who already are four generation uh, settlers? I mean, if if you uh, relate to Palestinians and regard them as still refugees after uh, 72 years, how come uh, settlers that, and we're talking about, by the way, the, the oldest settler settlements uh, are on the areas where it would be very hard to annex unless you, you, you massively annex like Netanyahu wants to. Talking about uh, Shiloh and, and Bethel and, and, and all these uh, places, these biblical names places. Alon they were there. Elon Moret. They're all from, from the uh, uh, mid uh, late 70s for the first. It's not uh, a coincidence. They were put there because of that. By the Gush. Yes, by, by Sharon, by Gush Emunim. Uh, the whole idea is to make it impossible to come to. Uh, I agree. But I, you know, as someone who respects. They were put there, they were allowed to. They weren't. They were put there. No, they weren't the, placed there. These people moved there on their free will. They got uh, got it a depends. lot of economical um, benefits. It depends. Yeah, these people it depends. But, but there I, for I agree that, that purposes. I agree that that most of the settlers. What I just said is is uh, Ariel that you mentioned before. The big settlements are populated with folks who um, went there because of the social benefits. Uh, you know, it's uh, um, cheaper housing. It is true that most of those settler settlements. The smaller ones, but the ideological ones, which are much deeper uh, in the um, in the territory, are more ideological. They regardless knew who of they that, were dealing with nobody regardless was going to move there in the seventies. Right, know. but these might be their great. Sometimes because they, they had many children, they might be the great yeah. grandfathers of of four genera fourth generation right. that was born there. Right, and it, it's difficult for me to say. Okay, so let's just evacuate all these people because, you know, they didn't move there. They, they were born there. Yeah, I have they're, to they're... say that as a, as a child, one of the most difficult memories for me was, I mean, because it, it wasn't, I don't think it was so moving to me as a child, but I remember watching my parents. We used to live in the States back then, but my parents' reaction, well, I wasn't that young. I was like 15, 16. Mentally, you were. But I was, yeah, I was like four. I'm still. <laughs> but uh, but I I, um, I remember watching my parents' reaction to the Gush Katif uh, evacuation. Right. And that was, that was you know, extremely difficult for many Israelis. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, to be honest, I was then the chair of Young Merits. And I had this um, tent of, 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 of dialogue uh just beside the uh the the Gaza border um uh with Israel and 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 there was uh apathy in the Israeli public uh, opinion uh, you guys are too uh, young and now you're after a decade of a Likud uh, of a Netanyahu led uh coalition it was a Likud led step mind you uh, Arik Sharon was the the leader of the yeah. Likud back then and he was he was the one who evacuated the Gaza Strip and, and, and uh, as they say, uprooted the settlements there. Against his voters' will. 
whatever. I, I'm, I'm not sure because uh, even uh, even when he left the arena after having a stroke, uh, his successor got three times the votes that uh, Netanyahu got uh, when when he split out of the Likud. But regardless of that, it, it's true. It's, it was against the, the majority of Likud members. Yeah, people who voted Likud no. in, the, in the previous election. I would not say that. Because they, no, they, but he, the had, images, he had 38 seats. The maybe. images of the evacuation are still kind of seared into many people's minds. I mean, it was a, it was a tough the scene. It, it wasn't in Israel. I lived there. I was a political person there. I thought it's, it's, it's something major. Most of the Israeli public didn't care. But I still care, okay? And I care about, and, and right now, it's, it sounds like, like I'm a uh, hallucination, right? What I'm talking about. Uh, uh, about settlers being yeah. uprooted now and all that. It can happen. I think, uh, uh, and I think that, that it, the settler uh, um, uh, human rights and civil rights should only, and I say that as, as, as the chair of the uh, uh, executive board of merits, as someone who's uh, 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 you know, a spokesperson of the, of the Israeli uh, left, uh, someone who truly believes, as, as I mentioned many times in this show already, that we should not be there, the, the uh, settlers' rights are, should, should be uh, taken into account. And, and to evacuate all these uh, settlements now is at, at least problematic, if not impossible, from a human rights point of view. Okay? Nothing is impossible, but it's very difficult because they, they, they built their own uh, rights not to be uh, uh, disposed of their... So what's the solution? Economic incentives? Uh, that's one so that, that's you're one you're not going to get anybody out of alon more for i mean what even if you pay him a million right. dollars i think i, I think of gonna... something else i think of a of a benelux i think of of um, a situation where palestine and israel create uh, ex territories we're talking about confederacy, uh, confederacy but confederacy in the american for, to the american listeners right. yeah. especially these days especially you guys yeah. might <laughs> your statues would be uh, yeah. uh, the Confederate Israeli flag. Exactly, but we're talking about uh, Benelux was a, a union between uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, the Netherlands, which had freedom of movement and, and freedom of uh, uh, trade between those. Uh, I mean, you could be a citizen of uh, of Belgium and uh, living in uh, the Netherlands, but you know. Um, Still getting the full rights as a as a resident, but not as a uh, citizen. You, you you would still vote so in be, Belgium. They'd be citizens of a Palestinian state. They will be residents of Palestine, citizens of Israel. Ah. They will have the same. The settlements would no be, Israeli security forces protecting them. Though. No Israeli security forces uh, protecting them. They'll right. have a militia. Yeah. I, I, I hope militia. there would not be a and and there should be a you know security agreements for that. <laughs> it's difficult to imagine. By the yeah, way, very. The, but I, I some don't... would say you're delusional. Uh, perhaps <laughs> uh, you even five minutes ago. <laughs> it sounds like I'm hallucinating. No, I, uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, the delusion would be that that uh, settlers would be approved now, but I think yeah, that's yeah. also that can also happen still. And I think the settlers themselves understand that, and that's why. And you said before that Israel is divided by two. You do know, you do realize that uh, about at least the majority of the, the settlers' uh, leadership is against the annexation right now because they... Because it's not enough in their no, eyes. No, because they think that... It will lead to a Palestinian, a Palestinian state. state. according to the Trump yeah. plan. Meaning so, it's giving too and, much. And the, the more moderate right-wingers say, come on, you know the Palestinians. It's, it's, all, it's, a, right. it's a show. It's right. a charade. Right. We'll annex and we all know right. that nobody, nothing will happen. But afterwards. the Isha Council, the, the official yeah. uh, representatives of the, uh, of the settler uh, movement, they are against. Um, and they have a campaign going on. It's not like they're, yeah. they're actually against. I mean, they're not like saying that with a, a blink or they're, they're actually against. Um, so yeah, I think I don't. I don't think I'm delusional. I think it's it's uh, doable uh, with interim steps. Uh, but for me, the settlers are not the enemy, not at all. Uh, the, they're my brethren. I, I I by the way, I respect their ideological commitment. At least uh, many of them, not all of them. Some of them are, you know, extremely criminals. Criminals, terrorists, those uh, racists. Not, but the, the, but the, the ones I who are mean, living. You there. have there some some hubs. 
yeah. uh, that can uh, that that you know evolved into that. But at large, at large, the the, the settler ideological uh, population, I, I respect them. I respect them a lot. But I do think right now, I mean, I wish they weren't there in the first place because I think it's it's a real uh, danger to the Zionist enterprise. The, the settlement enterprise is the most imminent danger, more than Iran, more than anything else, to the Zionist enterprises. Then I think, what are, what, as you said, what's your solution? So I'm, I'm thinking of creatively what you can do in such a shitty situation where you have you so many Jews I there. Mean, the settlers are the largest uh, threat to Israelis ex- the like settlements. existentially. The settlements, not the settlers. Yeah, but I'm saying the settlements, even that the, being the largest existential yes. threat to Israel seems to me so far-fetched. I mean... I, I, again, if you agree with me... Like if Iran, has, if Iran reaches nuclear uh, capacity, right? Capabilities. That, that's not a bigger threat? It's a threat that you can deal with, you know. You you, you have the abilities. To, can you them first? Uh, no nuke problem. them first. You have, you know. <laughs> no, but come on. this even is something. A, even that's a pretty shitty situation. It's like to be it's in. like comparing a mental health uh, problem to uh, a severe one to cancer. When when you're um, when you're schizophrenic and will, you might end up killing yourself, or whether you have cancer and you can treat it with. Are they, both are very bad. I'm not. I'm not. I'm very much against uh, Iran reaching a nuclear capacity. Iran's the cancer. Yes. Okay. But but the suicidal yeah, yeah. Uh, tendency it's is also extremely bit. dangerous, and it comes from within. So it's much harder to uh, deal with. Some uh, say that giving sovereignty to a population of people who will never cease too long for your destruction and you not being here, that is the schizophrenic suicidal I, assumptions. I, I, I hear that. Uh, I believe, look, we had, a, you have an agreement. Why should I give them anything is what I'm asking you. First of all, because I, again, because what you, they if, will do, if you what want they would to, think, if you would, they... you're not granting them any, anything. Basically, no, in your they're solution. signing, a, they're signing a, a historical defeat while signing uh, such a, uh, an agreement with Israel, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. And, but and, they will and they're get paying, a state. They're paying a huge price for their um, historical leadership back in 48. Right. That's the truth. But for them, it's the, just in, a starting instead point. Of getting, it's instead a of starting getting 40% point of the... Con- for yeah. if, you know, you start, you put your leg in the door. And but I'm not talking about a temporary uh, a solution. I'm talking about a, a final right. uh, status uh, solution. But once they a have a status state, to solution. Once they, once they have so a state. They, th- so I'll give you an example. Many new I'll roads ex- are open I to don't them. think so. Actually, it's the, comp- it's, it's the contrary. We had a state of war with Egypt. And uh, this was Israel's biggest enemy. If, if you compare it to Iran even, that was the biggest uh, existential threat to Israel. It almost... Uh, may, uh, came into reality in 73, in October 73, in the Yom Kippur War. And, and we all know the trauma uh, that Israel undergone. Uh, Egypt itself stopped at one point. If it would have continued, Syria and Egypt would have uh, met, its, uh, their, their, uh, would, would have met in, in, in Haifa or in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, v- this vicious enemy of Israel that killed more, the, the most Jews since Hitler, I'm sorry, uh, if you take the, the, the if you count and, yeah. the, the casualties uh, on on uh, our wars with uh, with Egypt, signed an agreement with us. That agreement um, remained intact after the signer of that agreement was assassinated because of that agreement. Remained intact after Israel, uh, for the first time ever, conquered an Arab capital, Beirut, back in uh, eighty two. Uh, remain Muslim intact, Brotherhood remain intact before that remain intact uh, of two Palestinian uprisings and as you say even after that regime was toppled and in, 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 in replacing him was the, the, the same party that killed that assassinated that president President Sadat the late President Sadat who signed the agreement with Israel it was still kept intact. But that's because this is apparently a rational country. And I don't think <laughs> that a population, which after so many, so such a long time, they still think that they will return, right? They can't give up 
the dream. They can't give up the keys to their ancient homes. They are not, in my opinion, that is not a rational way of thinking. So it's hard for me to if sign a deal with people who, who are not rational. If you'll have a uh, public opinion poll, a deep one, in Egypt, and you compare it to Palestine, to the Palestinian territories, you would find much more um, understanding and acceptance of Israel in the Palestinian territories than in Egypt. I don't think you're, you're correct. It's a, it's a question of rationality. I believe that if you have an agreement that ends all claims and also has extremely strong elements of security. Look, we conquered, as you mentioned before in your opening remarks, uh, the, the, this territory in, in what? Four days? I believe it was. Four days, the West Bank. We can, uh, we're, and we're much stronger now. If we sign the deal and they get a state and they and rebel, is it fine by that we conquer everything and kick them out to Jordan? I don't think that will be the situation. It's not fine. Whatever is fine by me, I, I, I don't think, I'm not against protective wars. I'm not a pacifist. I believe that uh, a country like Israel has to be very strong, militarily speaking, and in specific situations has to be aggressive against uh, its attackers. Uh, I think that the situation in the occupied territories is where, uh, and, and, and you know, we mentioned before we started this show that I used to be a right winger myself. Yeah. I was a member of the Likud party. I was a strong supporter of, of, of the, what we call Eretz Yisrael HaShema, the greater Israel. And, and I changed, <laughs> I changed my, my, my politics when I, uh, when I was drafted, when I served in the occupied territories. You know, I, I, I went into, the, into service uh, with, with the speeches of Anachem Begin echoing in my head, speaking about how the Maccabeans uh, won over the uh, the Greeks and and you know what we celebrate in Hanukkah every every year and I get got there and I realized that we are the Greeks in the occupied territories we are not the Maccabeans they, they, they want freedom how come the Jewish people can uh, prevent freedom from a people that regards itself as a, as, as a people you know and, and then the right wingers say it's not a people whatever some Palestinians say that we're not a people we're just a religion Whatever, a, a nation. I mean, the Bible is also fraught with the Jews conquering and massacring and committing genocide. We're not in a biblical. No, uh, I know. Era. I'm just saying. But if you look to the Bible for inspiration, I look we can the find Bible, plenty of inspiration. I look at the for Bible for stuff, everything. It's true. No, saying. but I talked about Menachem Begin. You talked about the Bible. <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm uh, saying he's, he's, he's more, much more contemporary. Let, let from me, the Bible. Uh, let me rephrase the question. We don't have much time, but. Just, okay, if you are for protective wars, and so if, are you for or against, assuming Gaza is attacking us, conquering Gaza, and and I, I don't know what to do with them, but let's there's, say there's kick a, them out to wherever. I'm not in, in, in favor of kicking anyone out uh, anywhere. Uh, having a population transfer is, is something that is, is strong. I'm strongly against. I don't think it's imaginable to do it. Uh, so striking them the immensely. Are I, you for that? I'm. I'm not for anything uh, of of that nature. Uh, I believe that the solution for Gaza has to be a political solution. Uh, and there and, you go. But so when not, we'll have a Palestinian state, they will attack us. You also, you won't say let. There is no agreement with them. Gaza. That's exactly what I'm telling you. There is no agreement with Gaza. And there never will be. Why? I mean, because it's just they want to be, kill it, us it all. We have, by the way, we have a, a very uh, strong mechanism between Netanyahu and, and, and Hamas working right now. It works very well. Uh, but if you will have a permanent status agreement with the Palestinians that would include Gaza too, then any, everything they'll do will, will not be uh, trying to fight their uh, but controller you just say occupier. you're for protective wars. Well, I, I'm saying that in, a, in an imaginary situation where the Palestinians would breach severely would attack Israel with rockets from uh, Ramallah to Jerusalem and from uh, uh, Kalkilia to Farsaba, then, then, then of course we'll... Uh, we'll uh, can we'll we put have, it in the agreement? What? That, they'll, that it will be a breach of the agreement and we'll have pen. the right to Get defend ourselves, of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. But they yeah, won't be able to do that because there'll be a severe control over what uh, weapons they, they will have or not have in such an agreement, exactly as they have now. I mean, they are cooperating with us. Again, with our forces, they proved themselves over, over the past uh, uh, 15 years to be uh, cooperating with, with Israel. They thought it would lead them to a Palestinian state, but it only, only uh, 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 drives them apart, apart from it. it. It doesn't make any sense. 
Who, who's cooperate? Hamas? No. Uh, PA. The PA. Ah, okay. The PA. Okay. Okay. It was a very interesting. Yes. What can we plug? Uh, like well, the uh, Hachazit, right? www. Hachazit. H a c h a z i t. dot org. dot i l. No hyphens. No anything. No. Nope. All one word. Yes. And All you right. accept donations there, I guess. Of course. Okay. There's and, an English section there. And and we uh, can't we can't say to donate to you. Because, but you can say that. But no, I'm please kidding. donate. I'm kidding. Donate, <laughs> donate, guys. Go if you, <laughs> if you, if you support the our colleague. effort if you for democracy yes. in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. We and didn't also, discuss that at all, by the way. Uh, yeah. Well, you'll have to come again. I, I'll, I'll, I'd love to. Um, also, you're on social media. Yes. Um, you can uh, uh, follow me on uh, Twitter or Izaki. You are I Z A K I on Facebook. And of course, the front also, uh, but that's mostly in Hebrew. Okay. I, I tweet every now and then also in, um, uh, in English. Okay. And you do, and you do lectures. Right? Yes, I do. Yes. Zoom lectures. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, if someone's interested, they yeah, can reach out, please. right? On yeah. Twitter or wherever they yeah. can. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So before we go, we have three collaborations. First, with the Jewish Journal, they're at jewishjournal.com, so check them out for podcasts, articles, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, highly recommended. Also, yes, israelnationalnews.com, guys, Arutz Sheva, uh, another great news outlet, check them out, israelnationalnews.com, they're also on Facebook, uh, sometimes we go live. Yes, and down in Australia, the Australian down Jewish News, AJN. Timesofisrael.com for everything related to the Australian Jewish community. And that is it. Uh, we also accept donations. Yes, 2NJB.com slash donate. If you want to throw a few bucks our way, we would really appreciate it. And that is it. Thanks you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Good luck. Bye.